Talkhancer.com. Talkhancer.com. No case is typical. You should not expect to experience these results. The winner of Salem Broadcasting's Talk Show of the Year Award and the Virginia Association of Broadcasters Awards for Outstanding Feature Reporting and for Best Documentary, it's the Don Crow Show on Life Changing Talk Radio, WAVA. Hey, how you doing, folks? Hello, welcome to another hour of the Don Crow Show. Conversation each day on things going on in this world that you and I want to talk about, learn about, but then get informed and get involved. Do something about it. Try to make a difference in what I call positive and life-affirming ways. And certainly, we are delighted to take this, well, this entire afternoon to honor those who've done just that. They've gotten trained. They've gotten equipped. They've gotten, uh, uh, they've gotten involved. I mean that most sincerely, and some of them to the ultimate point of uh, sacrifice. For what? For our freedoms as Americans. Something I'm afraid we Americans uh, take far too uh, easily for granted because we've had it for so long, and it's never been jeopardized in ways that perhaps it is right now. So uh, I hope you realize uh, what the late Ronald Reagan had to say. Our founding fathers here in this country brought about the only true revolution that has ever taken place in man's history. Every other revolution simply exchanged one set of rulers for another set of rulers. But only here did that little band of men so advanced beyond their time that the world has never seen their like since evolve the idea that you and I have within ourselves the God-given right and the ability to determine our own destiny. But freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in the bloodstream. The only way they can inherit the freedom we have known is if we fight for it, protect it, defend it, and then hand it to them with the well-taught lessons of how they in their lifetime must do the same. And if you and I don't do this, then you and I may well spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it once was like in America when men were free. Thank you. Remarks he made more than once, but on that occasion, clear back in 1961 to the Phoenix Chamber of Commerce, but they're as true today as ever, if not more so, and I hope uh, we realize what's at stake, and also that we understand how important it is that we honor and celebrate those who have fought so loyally and so sacrificially for our freedoms. As a matter of fact, have you ever heard or read the stories of some of our nation's greatest heroes, our POWs? The men who, in Vietnam, for example, endured literally years of torture, isolation, unimaginable suffering. And did you ever say to yourself, could I do that? Do I have what it takes to survive such an experience and do it with honor? Well, in his powerful new book, Leading with Honor, Leadership Lessons from the Hanoi Hilton, my guest this hour says there's a deeper and more helpful question to be asked. Do you have what it takes to lead with honor now, where you are now, with your team, your family, your community, your country? A former Air Force pilot, Colonel Lee Ellis, spent 1,955 days behind enemy lines in North Vietnam. Uh, And it's a fair question to ask, how did American military leaders in the brutal POW camps of North Vietnam inspire their followers for six, seven, even eight years to remain committed to the mission Resist a cruel enemy and return home with honor. What leadership principles engendered such extreme devotion, perseverance, and teamwork? And what can we and other Americans learn from their dedication and sacrificial service? For as uh, the colonel says in the opening sentences of this powerful new book, our culture desperately needs courageous servant leaders, men and women who have clear vision and strong character, who instill confidence and inspire excellence, who don't fold under pressure, compromise on principle, or practice deception. In short, we need leaders who are committed to leading with honor. Colonel Ellis is founder and president of Leadership Foundation, LLC, also Freedom Star Media. Uh, He is a leadership consultant and keynote speaker in the areas of leadership, team building, human behavior, and his clients include Fortune 500 senior executives, C-level leaders for telecommunications, healthcare, military, military, and other business sectors, and Colonel Ellis, it's an honor to welcome you to the Don Crow Show on this Veterans Day. Well, thank you, Don. It's so good to be with you today. 
Well, I've enjoyed what I've been able to read thus far of your book, and early in it you say, although I'll tell you some of my story, a more important goal is to tell you about the leaders I saw in action. They are my heroes. I commend them to you as role models. Uh, But before we get to those remarkable men uh, and why they inspired such words from you, I'd love for our audience to hear at least a bit of your incredible story. Tell us a little bit about those five and a half years nearly that you spent as a POW. I sure will. Well, I was a kid who grew up on a farm in Georgia and always wanted to fly. So as soon as I got my college degree, I was straight in through ROTC into flight school and from there straight to the war as quick as they could get us combat trained. And I was on my 53rd combat mission over North Vietnam with another 25 or so over South Vietnam and Laos. My airplane uh, on a bombing attack, my airplane was hit evidently and it blew up into several pieces. Fortunately, uh, I was able to get to the uh, ejection handle, pull that handle, and away everything went. It all blew the canopy and fired the the shell that blew the canopy and pushed me up the rails and 60 or 70 feet above the airplane and automatically opened my parachute. And there I was in your worst professional and personal nightmare, coming down over enemy territory, the people we've been bombing, and about to be captured by them. That. <laughs> that was my that was uh, my day on November the seventh. It was forty five years ago today, last Thursday, that that happened to me. And you know, it's uh, I tell you the first thing about you knowing about me is I came from a wonderful Christian home where I had read the Bible regularly, been to church regularly, and I had that strong foundation, knowing that God had a plan for my life, and I really believed that throughout. And I think that was the foundation that all of my um, resilience was built on but uh, and i so appreciate what you've said and i want to get into that further because i know that's really at the heart of your book is your love for the lord and your faith in him through those dark years along with so many of your uh, fellow uh, leaders in uh, in hanoi hilton uh, but uh, i don't know that uh, anybody could ever possibly prepare himself mentally for such an event i suppose uh, all of you uh, in some fashion were taken through dry runs of sorts mentally to what if such and such happens? Did, uh, was that something that you uh, ever could have thought yourself uh, experiencing? Well, we had been through uh, training, uh, a section of training. Mm-hmm. All the combat crews were trained to to go through a, an escape situation, a survival situation, and a POW situation. So we had some knowledge of what would be expected of us. We had the Code of Conduct memorized in our head, the six articles. So we had some good preparation for that, but of course nothing uh, like that is ever like the real thing because the the threat is real when you're there, and they were threatening to try us as war criminals. They were threatening us that some of us might not go home, and there was regular torture going on in the camp. So uh, there was plenty to be scared about, and we obviously were from time to time or most of the time in the early years. Uh, I think the, one of the big parts of it was is that you saw – and you knew because at times we were isolated from each other, but we had we knew enough through our covert communication to know that people were making it, and our job was to make it one more day. So we lived to one day at a time to make it to the next day. How did the Lord's peace help you? And uh, was it a constant, or did it was it something that sort of uh, I think maybe even in civilian life we find there are days the Lord seems very real to us, other days He seems a long way off. Did you go through those uh, those polar those polarized points where one day you just knew the Lord was with you, but then another day you're saying, "Lord, where are you?" Did- uh, I would say yes, that's true. Although I tend to be a person. Um, I tend to just um, wrongly sometimes, maybe, uh, not wrongly, but I I have strong faith, so I assume that he's always there. Now, Mm -hmm. I realize sometimes Mm -hmm. I move away from him, and so I want to scramble back. But it's uh, when you're out of control, Don, Uh. you have to, you, you have no choice. You know, you're depending on your enemy for a roof over your head and the food that you're eating, and you're so out of control, you control nothing except your own mind and your will. So that uh, that really is so humbling that you know that you can't control things, and so you're having to depend on him. Now, that doesn't mean that I didn't have to do my part, and I didn't have to face, uh, to face uh, and confront my doubts and fears and mm-hmm. do my job. 
Well, you remind me of uh, a saying of one of our college professors many years ago when I was first training for pastoral ministry, but it stuck with me in all senses ever since. He said, there must come a time in your life where the initiative for your life passes from you to God. And mm-hmm. s- somewhere along the line, we have to let go and uh, really realize, like you say, that we can't control anything, really, ultimately, except by the grace of God. Mm-hmm. That's right. We're going, to right. come, we're going to come back with more, and I'm sure it'll be a quick hour. If you have a question for my guest, you're welcome to give us a call. But we're going to be talking about this just-released book called Leading with Honor. Leadership Lessons from the Hanoi Hilton, divided into two wonderful sections. We'll discuss those a bit more in detail when we come back. The author is Colonel Lee Ellis. We'll be right back. going to do today? I don't know. What do you want to do? Mm, I don't know. What do you want to do? By the way, what do you want for dinner? I don't care. What do you feel like? Hey, are you taking the kids to school today? I guess I can. Do you want me to? Do you want to? Don't forget this Sunday at 10 a.m. We're going to Church, Church on, on the, the Move, move in, in Woodbridge, Virginia. Virginia. I know. First time ever the kids have been so excited to go to church. I think everything's going to be okay. Any town USA, a typical family looking for definitive answers from each other. Then, without question or hesitation, they all have a strange and immediate agreement to go to a place called Church on the Move. Clear answers. We all search for them. Dare to find that clarity at Church on the Move in Woodbridge, VA. Onthemove.org. Onthemove.org. The perfect church for people who aren't. Honey... Who's that man? In this tight economy, it makes good sense to save money. Let us help you save money, up to half off and more, with the D.C. Discount Shopping Club. This week, save up to half and more on oil changes from Hillmouth Automotive, adult or child eye examinations from Khalil Eye Care Center in Reston, carpet cleaning from VIP Steamer, and with new offers being added daily. Saving money is easy when you visit us at wava.com and type in the keyword discount. The following is a WAVA editorial message from station manager Tom Moyer. WAVA Radio endorsed a candidate for president in the recent election. We ran editorials expressing our commitment to core biblical values. These values include marriage between a man and a woman, the sanctity of human life, and religious freedom. The candidate we endorsed for president did not win the election, but we wanted you to know that we will continue to fight for our biblical values. No matter who the candidate is or who the political party is, we remain committed to support biblical values every day. Thank you for standing with us. 20 years ago, we began life-changing radio on WAVA 105.1. Then, we added WAVA.com to bring our powerful teaching and healing to the Internet. Then, WAVA became available in the app stores for iPhone, iPad, Android, and BlackBerry. Now, find the WAVA of the future at TuneIn.com. TuneIn puts our life-changing programs just about everywhere, including devices that haven't even been invented yet, where radio is just the beginning. WAVA 105.1. Hello, this is David Jeremiah. So often we look to the things of this world to find fulfillment, but God's unchanging love is the only answer to satisfy the deepest yearnings of our hearts. Join Dr. David Jeremiah for a night of encouragement with special worship and a message from God's Word, November 15th at the Giant Center in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Request your free tickets today by visiting our website at davidjeremiah.org slash rallies. That's davidjeremiah.org slash rallies. Crow Show on WAVA, honoring our veterans this day by talking about such books and uh, with the authors thereof as this one, Leading with Honor, Leadership Lessons from the Hanoi Hilton. The foreword is written by a very distinguished United States Senator himself uh, who knows firsthand of these matters, saying, Lee Ellis and I share a bond that goes back to our experience in the POW camps of North Vietnam. He was captured 11 days after me and we occupied neighboring cells in the Hanoi Hilton for 18 months of our captivity. When peace agreements were signed, we paced the open compound at Plantation Camp together, waiting for our release date. We've been friends ever since. And in leading with honor, says John McCain, United States Senator, 
Uh, Lee draws from the POW experience, including some of his own personal story, to illustrate the crucial impact of leadership on the success of any organization. His writings highlight lessons and principles that can be applied to every leadership situation. As I mentioned earlier, uh, the colonel does that sort of work all over the country, all over the world right now, training in terms of leadership. But uh, these are lessons learned in uh, in the fires of uh, crisis, Colonel. Uh, talk about how leadership played such a significant role to all of your surviving and how it ex- how it worked itself out, how it expressed itself in a POW camp. Sure. Well, in the... Part of the code of conduct is it says that the senior ranking officer will become the leader. So we didn't have to vote on leaders like we just had an election. We we knew who that person would be automatically once we compared dates of rank. And it turned out that uh, we were blessed with some of the greatest leaders, I think, that there, we've ever had in our country for that situation. They were experienced military guys. They were heroic uh, fighter pilots. They were uh, just men of great honor. And the thing was, as they built a culture and set the policies that we would live under, they were the first ones that had to go into the crucible to live by those policies. So they were tortured first and most often, but yet they continued to bounce back and continued to set the standard of what our conduct and behavior should be. And that was so inspiring to us to have leaders that were like that, who had that kind of courage, who had that kind of resilience and who had uh, so much uh, character and discipline and honor to do that, that we wanted to be like that, and so that inspired us. And then we also had uh, we had good teamwork, and we, to some degree, we're a very competitive group, and so if Joe could do it, then I want to be able to do it. Whatever Joe lives up to, I want to be able to at least try to equal that. Now, in reality, we all are tougher mentally and physically in different amounts, so didn't weren't always able to compete, but at least we competed in our attempt to be honorable and to carry the flag and do our duty. And as I recall in reading one part of the book, that wasn't the case in at least one significant uh, leadership role. You had to actually bypass or replace a leader. And I guess that reflects itself in civilian life as well. Not everybody steps into the gap as we need them to, right? Yes, and you know, the interesting thing, though, I think it was courage that caused this person to fall by the wayside, so to speak. And I see I see that same thing happening in today's uh, workforce in every area, whether it's in ministry or education or business or politics or wherever. Mm-hmm. We see people making uh, big leadership mistakes because they lack the courage to do what they know they ought to do. In the moment of temptation or when the opportunity is there, And rather than step into it, I say leaning into the pain to do what your duty is and what you know you ought to do, they tried to take the easy way out, and that's what this individual did. And isn't that, uh, Colonel, uh, isn't isn't that really the result, whether we realize it or not, of what C.S. Lewis may have called a thousand small turnings? In other words, uh, just as somebody said, the fires of persecution don't make martyrs, they just reveal them. Uh, Mm -hmm. I would say, on the other hand, it also... uh, uh, a, a failure of one sort or another really has a history to it that others may not see. In other words, the day-to-day decision yes. is what I'm trying to say. Am yes. I right? Yes. Yeah, this person was basically an insecure person on the inside. And that's why in the book I talk a lot about being authentic. If you have the courage and the real confidence where you're authentic, you know yourself. I think it's so important to know yourself, to know what your strengths are, what your struggles are, to know your personality, to know your passion, to know your purpose. You know, what is your purpose? And probably most of all is what are you really committed to? And once you've identified what you're committed to, then it's a matter of having the courage to stick with it. And I don't think this individual had ever really sat down and figured out what he was committed to, and he didn't have the internal uh, tools to actually live out what he what he talked about on the inside, he wasn't capable of living that out. Well, you open the book, of course, as we already said, with a little bit of your own story and uh-huh. the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the 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 shells that brought you down, the the, fi- the fire that brought you down to the ground and, and immediately into captivity. And I I asked early on if that was a surprise. In one sense, I what I've heard you say is that because of your upbringing, your training, and years of discipline prior. Uh, you really were ready for that event, though you, I'm sure, would not have ordered it up for yourself. It's what life brought you, and 
Uh, so those decisions you made early on were based on what you've been through in years past? Yes, that's exactly right. It was training, and it was uh, the mental discipline. Uh, I relied on my training in those first uh, two or three minutes from the time the, uh, in, the aircraft blew up. And I was I was very calm. I was very businesslike. I was making decisions just like you would if you had a uh, crisis in the office and you had to quickly make decisions. That's kind of the way I was operating. And I really wasn't scared until I was captured. Then I was totally out of control. And uh, that's when the fear hit and I guess you could say the shock hit. By the way, folks, this book is divided wonderfully into two sections. We'll talk about each as much as we can, leading yourself and leading others. And, uh, uh, Colonel, as you said, uh, uh, the first point is to, the first lesson is to, to, to know yourself. And you have three suggestions here or goals in that regard. Uh, let's talk about each of those just for a moment. Consider your purpose, cons- uh, connect with your passion, and clarify your unique personality talents. Talk about those three in order. Yeah, I think uh, for me, I, let's kinda, I may take them in a different order. But sure. My passion had always been to fly airplanes and to be, I always felt like I would be a warrior. So I had a passion for what I was doing as a profession. Uh, secondly, my personality, I knew enough about who I was to know that I like adventure. Uh, I like to be in control. I like to call the shots. I was a quarterback on the high school football team, so I was accustomed to being in charge, and I liked that perspective. So the military offered me that opportunity in flying. And then uh, in terms of purpose, uh, again, going back to I always felt like I'd be a warrior, but more than that, I really felt like that uh, my real purpose on this earth was to honor God with my life. And so I felt like I was doing that in my profession. So those things were the things that were very important. And those were commitments also that I'd made. So it came to what it really came down to was that I had the courage to do my best to walk through those commitments. And I think uh, overall I did. You know, there were times when I wasn't as courageous as I wanted to be. Uh, there were times when I wasn't as tough as I felt like I should be or that I really was. But uh, I learned and grew through those times, and I became tougher and more courageous. As I faced each one of those, I gained more confidence. And I think that's the way life is, you know. If you really know who you are and you're living out your life and not somebody else's, and we're all different. We all have different strengths, different passions, and so on. But if you're living out your life and you're dedicated to serving the Lord with your talents, then he's going to help you as you walk down that road, and, and you'll learn and get stronger and better as you go along. And I think that's the way our Christian walk is. We, we develop and we walk into uh, more and more of being like Christ. Would you agree with me, Colonel, in that regard, that that's really the bedrock issue to be settled above uh, uh, all others? In other words, if I have made, as you just described, a lifelong uh, absolute commitment to, uh, in, as God gives me grace, follow him and be his person in the world, wherever he puts me, if I settle that issue first as to who's in control at that most basic level, doesn't it make all the other decisions a lot easier to come by? Absolutely, absolutely, because uh, you've got once you've made that one, everything else starts to fall in place, and you realize that you know you're really a servant, and you do have areas of choice and responsibility, but you're still a servant, mm-hmm. and you ha- and then the, I think the real thing is that believe that God is on your side. Mm-hmm. You know, once you make that decision, you know that God is on your side, and it's a matter of walking down that road of faith and just really believing, you know. Uh, Henry Ford said it right, I think, once. Uh, he said, whether you believe you can or you can't, you're probably right. <laughs> well, when you know that you believe in the Lord and he's on your side, uh, you can. Uh, it's a matter of walking it out. And uh, as we go to this break, you remind me of Paul's words. I'm sure you know them. Others of our listeners do as well. Paul said, I'm, I'm uh, persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him until that final day. And I've often said to myself and others, uh, God's only obligated to keep what I've committed to him. If I'm still holding out on him, I'm responsible mm-hmm. for those areas myself. Yes, yes. That's a good way of putting it. I like that. We're going to come back with more. A great book. I highly recommend it. It's a powerful book on leadership, and uh, we'll talk more about it. And uh, you'll understand the principles of leadership uh, can be applied to all the areas of our lives, as you'll uh, see as you read the book, applied to business situations, home life, politics, and so forth. Leading with honor, leadership lessons from the Hanoi Hilton. 
And uh, Colonel Lee Ellis, U.S. Air Force retired, is the author. We'll be back in a moment with more. November is Orphan and Adoption Awareness Month. This is Tom Moyer encouraging you to support organizations that care for orphans. This month, WAVA is working with Cross International. Cross is rescuing orphans off the Mozambique and placing them in homes of Christian families. Your one-time donation of $68 will provide clothing, medical care, and school supplies for one of these rescued orphans for an entire year. Make your tax-deductible gift now at WAVA.com, keyword orphan, and thank you. The Beltway survived. Most of the main lines did and did quite well on this uh, light uh, holiday pace day. And uh, good evening. The report brought to you by University of Maryland University College in observance of Veterans Day. A lot, uh, fewer people were on the roads. Uh, there's still some slowing on the BW Parkway northbound. Uh, speeds are down from the NASA exit heading out towards 197. Beltway got off easy. Uh, no problems to report as you make your way uh, in towards the rest for 295, 50, or 450 either side. You're looking good both directions. Start preparing to advance your career in healthcare. Enroll in a healthcare program and earn your master's degree from U.S. UMUC, visit umuc.edu. With WAVA traffic, I'm Liz Drabick. Here is your exclusive 105.1 WAVA AccuWeather forecast. Mild and turning out cloudy early tonight. Occasional rain late tonight, low 50. Much cooler tomorrow, periods of rain during the morning. Clouds and sunny breaks in the afternoon. I'm 51 early tomorrow, then temperatures slowly dropping. Partly cloudy and colder tomorrow night, low 32 to 36. Mostly sunny on Wednesday and chilly, high near 50. With the AccuWeather forecast, I'm meteorologist Bob Larson. But a real-life counselor from Trinity Debt Management. Every day we help people with all kinds of debt or money-related issues. Some have lost their jobs, are in the process of health problems, or maxed out their credit cards. But no matter what kind of situation they may be facing, we're here for them. If you're in debt for any reason and you need help, call Trinity at 1-800-936-5496 and talk with a certified counselor. When people call Trinity, they're often worried and embarrassed. But then they realize what matters most is how we face those challenges. Trinity has a proven plan to help you. You make ends meet, save thousands in interest, and become debt-free for keeps. Anyone can fall behind in their bills. They just have to take that first step and start heading in the right direction. And with our help, they will catch up. If your debt has you down, call Trinity at 1-800-936-5496. That's 1-800-936-5496. 1-800-936-5496. Or visit MyDebtHasMeDown.com. Don Crowshaw on WAVA, reminding you Turning Point Ministries presents an evening with David Jeremiah coming right up this week, Thursday, November 15th at 7 p.m. at the Giants Center in Hershey, Pennsylvania. You can learn out how to register for your free tickets by going to WAVA.com and using the keyword events. My guest is the author of the new book, Leading with Honor, Leadership Lessons from the Hanoi Hilton Colonel Lee Ellis, U.S. Air Force, retired a prisoner for nearly five and a half years in the Hanoi Hilton, as it was called. He, along with uh, a number of others who are truly American heroes. And, Colonel, who were some of the other uh, names there? We mentioned John McCain earlier, but some others uh, perhaps that folks would recognize. Certainly we had the honor a few years ago of having Jeremiah Denton sit right here in uh-huh. the studios. I consider that one of the honors of a lifetime to just meet the man. But talk right. about those men. Well, uh, Jeremiah Denton was one of three that I singled out most in the book uh, because there were three primary senior officers that were the overall commanders at one time or another, and they it varied depending on who was uh, in the torture session or who was out of, uh, in isolation and out of commission, so to speak. But uh, Lieutenant Colonel Robbie Reisner, wonderful Christian man, he had been shot, been an ace in the Korean War, shot down eight MiG airplanes, uh, a real Air Force hero. Uh, was the overall senior ranking officer for many years and was the one that I communicated with and he gave me the code, not the code, but the, the, um, the culture guidelines for how we were to live, which was to follow the code of conduct and a couple other things. And then Jeremiah Denton, Commander Denton, and then the other main name that people might recognize was, uh, Commander Stockdale, later Admiral mm-hmm. St- Jim Stockdale. 
And those three guys were three different personalities, but three very powerful, uh, courageous leaders that continued to bounce back. They would be tortured. They would bounce back. They'd be put in solitary confinement, but they never backed off. They never gave up. They just kept coming back and provided that leadership that really held us together, I think, and set the example for everybody else. Of course, the the intermediate and lower level leaders out in whether it was in a in a building, in a cell block, or in the cell itself, there was always a senior ranking officer, and those people were doing their best to keep up and do their part too. So that really did hold us together well. But those were some of the more well known ones. Uh, We've got we've got several congressmen uh, out of our group, and uh, the two senators you mentioned, uh, Denton, and then uh, Senator McCain. So we've had some uh, some real stars come out of that group. To be honest with you. And how did you stay in touch with each other when, as you've already alluded several times, often you were in isolation? Mm-hmm. I know there is a wonderful answer to that, but how? Beyond that, how did you share stories? I read where you really strengthened each other's faith with Bible stories that you could uh, remember. You, of course, didn't mm-hmm. have any copies of the Bible, I don't think. But how, no, talk no. us, walk us through those uh, those experiences as well. Well, we had to communicate, uh, and so one of the guys had brought in with him, he had learned in survival school by staying after class and asking a question, the secret to some of the World War II communications in Korea. The guy had told him that they communicated by tapping on the pipes, but he didn't tell him how, and this one guy stayed after class and asked him, well, how did they do that? Was that Morse code? How did they do it? And he said, no, it wasn't Morse code. You can't tap a dot and a dash. It was a five-by-five matrix, which I talk about and show it in the book, but it's a, it's a way of communicating by a certain number of taps would equal a certain letter, and it would be a pair. Like if you wanted to say hi, you go down two, you tap twice, and over three, you always go down and then across. And then the I would be down two and over four for the I. So it was a nice little matrix, which we quickly learned, and we continued to tap for many years until we learned we could actually talk right through a wall by rolling up a blanket and talking into it. The blanket would be a muffler. And we could talk through a 16-inch wall. That was pretty uh, a pretty amazing breakthrough, and then we came up with a hand code like signing, but not quite as uh, sophisticated as that, but it worked very well for us. So we were always coming up with new innovative ways to communicate covertly because if we were caught, we would be severely punished if we were caught communicating. So uh, being able to do that uh, kept us busy and kept us occupied quite a lot, but it was also uh, good for morale. Uh, You know, I had a cellmate that hadn't been in church since he was five years old. His family was Catholic. His mom had a falling out with the nuns when his older brother was in school, elementary school, and so she just pulled the kids out of the parochial school. And he had never been back to church except for a couple of weddings and a funeral. And he he knew almost nothing about the Bible. So he would ask me to tell him Bible stories. And I ran out way too quick, and then I'd share some Bible verses, and I ran out way too quick. So I had to retell some of them a few times, which was okay. But I really vowed that if I ever got home, I would read the Bible often. I mean, I'd already I'd read it often growing up, but, I mean, I've read it most every day for the last 40 years. So, sure. what, uh, uh, what was it like to... Uh to see the struggles and help keep each other's morale up because I have to believe that uh, nobody, I wouldn't think all are up at the same time, so to speak. No, no, you really right. had to kind of come alongside each other emotionally and mentally, didn't you? Yeah, we really did. And we did that through our covert communications when needed. And uh, in lots of ways, we would take great risk to reach out to a fellow who was alone or who was uh, gone through torture, or we just knew was suffering with health issues or any morale or anything, we would take great risks to reach out to them and encourage them and say, "Hey, man, we're with you. You know, you can, you can do it. Bounce back. We've been through that. We know you're, you're, you put up a great fight for this, and so you know we're with you. And just hang in there, and things will get better. And of course, usually they do, and and we were able to all to hold together. Speak. We didn't have any suicides or anything like that yeah. in our group. We. I think there was one time when one fellow in our group was considering it, and of all things, uh, one of our fighter pilots uh, who had had very had broken his jaw and his arms when he ejected from the airplane, but he'd now healed back. But he gave a sermon. This was after we moved into big rooms toward the end of the war. 
but he he was just happened to be given he had volunteered to give a little sermon that Sunday and uh, he got up and told us to look around the room and to be thankful for where we were and we were alive and many of our friends didn't make it uh, they were shot down before us and uh, didn't make didn't even get captured so he really gave us a real pep talk and reminded us that God was on our side and we needed to hang in there and not feel sorry for ourselves and that guy made it through but it was just a great it was a great encouragement that he gave us that day one more thing before we take this next break and that of course uh, any of us who remember those years and watched the reports as they were coming in uh uh, we'll never forget uh, Jeremiah Denton General, uh, or rather Admiral Gen- uh, Admiral Denton, uh, blinking the word torture, uh, which was yeah. so key to, uh, I guess, uh, well, how key was that to uh, the war uh, eventually coming to an end? And what did the North Vietnamese do to him regarding Well, they that? never, yeah, they never realized. And by the way, you can go on, uh, you can search that on with your browser online. Just search Google blinks, uh, Denton bl- blinks torture and you'll actually see the original mm. uh, video of that it's, it's out there but what that did for us it, it gave the united states government a clear message of what the conditions were like that we were being tortured because they really didn't know what was going on with us so that's what it the most important thing it did is it put the word out about our treatment the second thing it did was uh, as we all found out about it it encouraged us and fortunately, the uh, Vietnamese communists never found out what he had done until after the war was over. They didn't know what he was doing, but he was tortured again for another press conference, and then uh, and many times actually after that. So he spent over four years in solitary confinement, as did Denton and Stockdale also. Very courageous individual. We'll take a break, come back for a few more minutes, folks. It's a quick hour, but I hope it's whetted your appetite already to get a copy for yourself. Get some for friends. Great Christmas gift. Great gift anytime, but especially honoring our veterans. If you know a veteran who can be encouraged and strengthened and educated all at once, this book will help do that. Leading with Honor, Leadership Lessons from the Hanoi Hilton by Colonel Lee Ellis, U.S. Air Force Retired. The foreword written by Senator John McCain and the book, a rich accounting of uh, what happened in those years, but also the lessons learned out of it. And when we come back, I'll ask the colonel to talk about the leadership training that uh, out of this, uh, these experiences he's now able to do in all kinds of settings and venues. Back in a moment. By the way, there's a website, freedomstarmedia.com, freedomstarmedia.com. You can check that out as well family. Remember last Thanksgiving when Uncle Jimmy had one too many ciders and forgot the turkey in the deep fryer? Poor Aunt Gail was so humiliated when the fire trucks arrived. This year is going to be different. I've made resis for all of us on a Nina's Dandy restaurant cruise. We'll meet in beautiful downtown historic Alexandria and Nina's Dandy will take care of everything else. Oh, it's going to be so beautiful. The fall colors along the Potomac. National monuments. Go to dandydinnerboat.com to check it out. I know, Mom. What about the food? Slow roasted turkey with cranberry sauce, sweet potatoes, mashed potatoes and green bean almondine did someone say pie pumpkin pecan and deep dish apple not to mention the chocolate mousse in case we haven't had enough pie (laughs) and dad don't stress about the price either dandy's restaurant cruise was so affordable i was able to purchase two tickets to budapest for uncle jimmy and aunt gail don't worry i told him it was from all of us dandy restaurant cruises call 703-683-6076 703-683-6076 or dandydinnerboat.com It's time for Christians to stop apologizing and start boldly declaring biblical truth. Now through December 8th, you can enter to win an outrageous truth prize pack from WAVA and Pathway to Victory, including the book, Outrageous Truth, Seven Absolutes You Can Still Believe by Dr. Robert Jeffress and the CD, America is Still a Christian Nation. To enter, go to WAVA.com keyword contest, WAVA.com keyword contest. I never eat a powdered donut when I'm wearing a black sweater because I'm a very careful and practical person. And that's why I never let a day go by without checking in with Facebook and Twitter. That's where I find out the latest scoop on my family and friends. And WAVA, of course. I mean, after a few years of listening to WAVA, I feel as though the people there are kind of like family. And now I can reach out to them just like I reach out to family on Facebook and Twitter. You should give it a try yourself. Here's one more tip from a careful and practical person. Never wrestle with a wet cougar when it's standing on a hot stove. Never works out. Three Hebrew friends named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are true 
Bible heroes. They courageously refused to bow to the king's image and worship his gods. Bow or burn in the fiery furnace, the king said. The boys chose to burn. As Christians, we can expect God to test and purify our faith. The Apostle Peter says, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery trial you are suffering as though some strange thing were happening to you. What fiery trial are you facing? Choose to obey God and remember this. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. From Washington, D.C., that's Ron Jones. Join him for something good. For information, visit somethinggoodradio.org. The Don Crow Show on WAVA brought to you in part by Cornerstone First Financial, a high-integrity mortgage company ready to help you with your mortgage needs. Talk to them at 202-625-1221. That's 202 202- 625-1221, cornerstonefirst.com on the web. On this Veterans Day 2012, we are honoring you, our veterans, and those who have given their lives on behalf of this great nation of ours. We thank those who are still alive and with us for your service in the various branches of armed service and uh, so many sacrifices that uh, perhaps uh, a book will never be written about, but you are represented in these books that we've been sharing and these authors who have uh, shared such good information with us today this hour of course uh, course focusing on a new book by uh, Colonel Lee Ellis US Air Force retired leading with honor by the way there's a website by that uh, name as well leadingwithhonor.com and uh, we a while ago I had you Colonel talk about leadership and its significance to you and others surviving the POW camps but how has that evolved into helping uh, corporations, businesses, families, all kinds of uh, situations develop leadership skills. Well, Don, after I came back, uh, I was six, six years behind my peers in operational experience and flying time, and then I got promoted to major two years early, so now I'm eight years behind my peers. So <laughs> I couldn't figure out how I was keeping up, and finally I realized that I learned a lot about leadership in the Hanoi Hilton. Mm. And then over the years, I was in the Air Force. I became, after I finished my days in flying as a squadron commander, I got into leadership training. And I just felt like this was where my real passion was. This is what God was calling me to do. And uh, because I'd walked the walk as a leader and made all the mistakes that one can normally make and get through and still have a good career. But I saw that those lessons that I'd learned there were had really helped me. And then as a leadership consultant now for 15 years, I just see, you know, what the problems are over and over and over again. You see the same problems. And I thought, you know, I, I've i learned those lessons, and I really need to share them. And they really, most of them came from the leadership, the great leadership that we had in the Hanoi Hilton. So as I sat down and started to list them out, and then uh, I knew that uh, that would be boring just to talk about lessons, so I thought I needed to tell the stories behind the lessons. So each chapter has the story from the POW camp, and then we shift gears and have kind of a break in the chapter, and we move to the lesson to clarify the lesson, and then I give examples from my corporate clients that I've worked with today to show how that lesson's actually playing out in today's workplace. Well, you're right. It is actually uh, beautifully laid out, folks, and structured in just the ways that the colonel described. Uh, And I know there's not time to uh, elaborate much, but as I said at the outset, you divided this into uh, two sections, I think so wisely saying, leading yourself and then leading others. And I've often said, uh, I can only be be a leader to the extent I'm willing to be led. That's true of my Christian faith, and I guess it's true in life, isn't it? I think so. I think there's... uh... You know, I think to be a good leader, at some point you have to have, to have learned to be a good follower. And even, um, you know, the one thing that they teach today in air-to-air combat, and this it took years to get this idea to be approved and carried out. I was just reading a book about it. But now we actually have in air-to-air combat so that the number two man can become the leader. If he's got the enemy in sight, then the leader, and the leader doesn't have it, then the number two becomes the lead, and the number lead becomes number two and supports him. So sometimes uh, learning how to be a good leader, uh, be a good follower, is necessary to be a good leader. One thing I wanted to point out, we talked about, and they are called lessons in the book, and there's 14 of them, 
the interesting thing for me is that this book is mostly about men, although there are some good stories in Chapter 6 about resilience and the families and so on. But women love this book, I think, almost as much or more than men, which has been so rewarding for me uh, to see that women love this book and uh, a lot of, for a lot of different reasons. But they read it. Uh, one lady told me her daughter, she gave it to her 20-year-old daughter in college, and her daughter read it over the weekend. Another lady said, I want every man to read this book. I read it, and this is one of my favorite books, and I want every man to read it. I want my sons, my husband, you know, every man to read it. Another lady said, "She, I was signing some books for her husband for his business, and she said, I came with him because I wanted to meet you and tell you that this book has changed the way I teach school and the way I coach girls, uh, uh, one of the girls across team. Mm-hmm. But they, women, uh, are able to see that the, in reality, this book is really about life lessons as much as leadership lessons. What, uh, or who, maybe I should put in the form of who or what, uh, both the pre uh, POW years and post and during, uh, who or what stands out to you yourself most effectively or most influentially as the person who shaped you as a leader? Well, uh, I would say that, first of all, was the guy who um, who uh, was with me when I was flying and shot down, and he was a captain. He was about six years older than me, and he was our room SRO. And his courage and his character was so strong that uh, it just was a great inspiration to me. You know, I just I was looking for somebody to hang on to, you might say, mm-hmm. and I happened to have the very best. You know, God provided the very best of the best for me to model after in terms of courage, in terms of leadership, character, and integrity. Um, he was couldn't, You couldn't have had a better uh, role model in the POW camp and as a leader than this guy. So that really helped me a lot. And then following him, there were others there um, in different ways. And I'm kind of an eclectic person. I, I try to find the best in other people and learn the principle behind it and then take that principle for myself. And then that is uh, because I had so many good ones. I have another Air Force friend who, with, for whom I've worked twice, and we've been peers three times. He's, again, about five years older than me. And, again, it was his courage, his integrity, his commitment, uh, just his character. You know, there's nothing as admirable as somebody with great character. They just attract people around them like a magnet. And I learned so much from him. And uh, and we've been friends, we've been hunting buddies, but uh, he still, I still look up to him as being someone that I I could always trust. Now, have, have I found anybody perfect? No, they've all had some flaws, even the best ones. But I learned to overlook that and to still accept them because they did have great character, and uh, they were a good role model for me. That's good counsel. A couple of more minutes with Colonel Lee Ellis. And not nearly enough time to do justice to the book, but that's the point. You uh, get the book and read it at your own pace. You may read it in a weekend, as that college student did. Uh, As a matter of fact, Susan McLaughlin, president and CEO of Vic Park Associates, said, Powerful and compelling. Lee Ellis does a masterful job of translating his experiences in captivity into thoughtful and thought-provoking leadership lessons applicable in all walks of life. Leading with Honor. That's the name of the book. Website by the same title, leadingwithhonor.com. Back in a moment. In this tight economy, it makes good sense to save money. Let us help you save money. Up to half off and more with the D.C. Discount Shopping Club. This week, save up to half and more on oil changes from Hillmouth Automotive. Adult or child eye examinations from Khalil Eye Care Center in Reston. Carpet cleaning from VIP Steamer. And with new offers being added daily, saving money is easy when you visit us at WAVA.com and type in the keyword discount. They were outnumbered. Ready. Out-equipped. They had no chance of winning. But they had one huge advantage. General George Washington. The fate of unborn millions will now depend, under God, on the courage and conduct of this army. We have to resolve to conquer or die. Just as the leadership of one man helped form a nation, today leadership can transform the world. Pass it on from the Foundation for a Better Life at values.com. 
This is Life Changing Talk Radio, 105.1 FM, WAVA. This is Pastor Dale O'Shills of Church of the Redeemer in Gaithersburg, Maryland, inviting you to tune into our weekly radio program, Practical Living, here on WAVA each Sunday morning at 10 a.m. And join us for one of our weekend worship services, Saturdays at 6.30 p.m. or Sundays at 9, 11, and 1. For more details, visit us at church-redeemer.org. Tune into Practical Living every Sunday morning at 10 on 105.1 FM, WAVA. Area pastors and ministry leaders, WAVA wants to help you get better connected with the body of Christ in the D.C. and Baltimore metropolitan area. We want to help you network with others, be encouraged, and find out about events that may be of benefit to you. Let us help you. Sign up for our monthly newsletter, Gatekeepers. Just send us an email at gatekeepers at wava.com. It's another way to stay in touch with 105.1 FM WAVA. You're looking for a Christian school for your kids? Then check out WAVA's Christian School Directory for the Christian school listed near your home. Now listing Christian schools in D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. Visit WAVA.com's quick links for WAVA's Christian School Directory today. Get your Christian school listed on the WAVA Christian School Directory. Help other faith-based Christian families learn more about your Christian school. Visit WAVA.com quick links and click on the Christian School Directory for more details. Since the beginning of the Christian church, believers have struggled to understand the proper relationship between the church and state. Now, in a new seven-part downloadable lecture series, R.C. Sproul explores biblical teaching about the church's relationship to the state and explains how we are to relate to the God-ordained authority of the government. You can have this series for absolutely free. Just go to wava.com and use the keyword download. Another free offer from 105.1 FM WAVA. John Crow Show on WAVA, just a couple more minutes uh, of this hour with Lee Ellis, Colonel Lee Ellis, former uh, U.S. Air Force retired pilot who was shot down over Vietnam, uh, served uh, our country as a POW uh, for nearly five and a half years, and uh, since that time has drawn a great deal of strength and wisdom from those years, which he's now sharing all over the uh, country and other venues as well, no doubt. I want to take this last moment, if, I'm, uh, if I could, Colonel, have you talk about your work as a leadership consultant and coach. You are president and founder of uh, something called Leadership Freedom and uh, also uh, Freedom Star Media. Talk about what those involved and how folks could access them. Yes, uh, leadershipfreedom.com is the website, but we do consulting, executive coaching, executive team building, and then succession planning at all levels from frontline supervisor right on up to the CEO level. Uh, we have a great sort, a great uh, stable of great consultants and coaches. They've all been leaders in their own right. But I've worked with uh, presidents and CEOs in Fortune 500 companies and CFOs and CIOs. And you know, the interesting thing is, uh, the people I get to work with are great leaders to start with because the one thing that someone who's a good leader knows is they have to keep growing and they take their team with them. They're all interested in developing the people under them. And that's actually from the book. That's one of the lessons. Lesson nine is develop your people. And the great leaders do that. So I work primarily with some of the top leaders around because there's the ones that want to grow. Bad leaders don't want to see me coming. They don't want that mirror held up. <laughs> so it's very exciting. It's been a wonderful uh, area, you know, that God has brought me into and given me great uh, opportunities with a lot of wonderful people. And I imagine uh, you could probably, if you haven't thought of it already, write a book on uh, leaders uh, from a biblical perspective because certainly, as you said, no perfect leaders, but there were some amazing leaders in both the Old and New Testaments, weren't there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And a lot of people have done that. You know, a lot of our pastors have written uh, books on that. I know John MacArthur and Chuck Swindoll and, and many others have written books about some of those leaders. And uh I'm, I'm probably going to stick more with the uh, secular leaders that I know. <laughs> well, <laughs> right done, about them, that might be might be a little easier for me at this point. I think you've done a great job. Thank you for taking time on this Veterans Day to talk to us. I appreciate it. We're honored. Well, thank you very much. And if folks are interested, they can get a free download of the first chapter and the introduction and the foreword at uh, leadership uh, leadingwithhonor dot com or uh, freedomstarmedia.com. dot com. It's the same site. Excellent. Thank you again, Colonel. 
Thank you, and have a great day. You too. Colonel Lee Ellis, U.S. Air Force, retired, and the book again, Leading with Honor. Go to leadingwithhonor.com, leadingwithhonor.com, or also freedomstarmedia.com. Thanks for spending this afternoon or any part of it with us here on the Don Crow Show. See you tomorrow.